There is another cohort that we've been following since about 2007, and this is in Taiwan. They've been comparing um, a similar health conscious uh, uh, non-vegetarian Buddhists with the vegetarian Buddhists. And the vegetarian Buddhists are very near vegan. They don't really consume much dairy at all, uh, if any. They have a little bit of egg once in a while, but not a lot. So they're very, very near vegan. And the rates of diabetes were 51% lower among vegetarian men and 74 to 75% lower among the vegetarian women. And I just want to tell you about the pictures on this slide. So this picture uh, right here is a picture of a typical, um, and a, the, the colors aren't very good on, with this PowerPoint projector. They're actually much more vibrant in, in real life. But, but basically, you go into the cafeteria. It's completely vegan from what all I could see. And, and it's the most colorful buffet, food buffet you've ever seen. That's their cafeteria food. Uh, and then I, I was taken on a tour of the kitchen. And I was absolutely stunned when I walked in and there were bags. These bags were this high. Just all of these bags of organic greens the nuns had just picked from the hospital gardens. And I asked, I said, well, what are, what are these? And they said, oh, this is the main food for our patients. They need organic greens to heal their bodies. And I went, what a concept, feeling, feeding hospital patients healthy food. Uh, it just is mind boggling. But uh, I, was, I was so impressed by what they were doing there. And then there was a study in India as well, a large study comparing uh, fairly young people, 20 to 49 years of age, and the lacto-ovo vegetarians in this study were 33% less likely to develop diabetes than non-vegetarians, and semi-vegetarians were about 24% less likely. So that's sort of what we know about vegetarian rates versus non-vegetarians non when we control for, for other factors like smoking and drinking and so forth. Vegetarians seem to be at lower risk. So what about uh, plant-based diets in the treatment of type 2 diabetes? Well, the, the research on this, I would say, really began with a pioneer by the name of James Anderson very famous nutrition researcher. And he did a, a series of studies between 1976 and 1991 comparing people eating a plant-based diet versus people eating a more conventional American Diabetes Association diet in people with type 2 diabetes. The plant-based diet was actually 70% carbohydrate. So this is a very high carbohydrate plant-based diet. And this diet contained 35 to 40 grams of fiber per thousand calories. So this is really quite shocking because in a 2,000 calorie diet, that's 70 to 80 grams of fiber, which is more than most vegans even would be eating. So it was a very whole food plant-based diet before we called it that. And uh, the vegetarians had more favorable plasma glucose, glucose tolerance, insulin sensitivity, and blood lipids. And what was so impressive is most of the plant-based patients had to discontinue or dramatically reduce their insulin or medication. And be, be, before we used to call it reversal, many of these patients actually did experience reversal. David Jenkins is a researcher from uh, Toronto, Canada, and he is one of the, uh, he's really one of my heroes. He is uh, an, a, just an extraordinarily brilliant man who is a very strong ethical vegan. And so in his research, he has um, done so much. He's the architect of the glycemic index, so that's, one of the things that has made him quite famous. He did many research studies showing favorable metabolic changes in people eating um, a, a very carefully designed diet that he called the portfolio diet, 
which is a diet that, that maximized many of the wonderful components in plant-based diets. And again, it was largely a whole food plant-based diet. And then we've got some uh, research out of Europe from the Czech Republic. Um, this um, randomized control trial with 74 uh, participants followed over 24 weeks and compared, they basically compared a vegetarian diet and the animal products in this diet were limited to not more than one low fat yogurt per day. And they compared that to a conventional diabetic diet. And the vegetarian diet was more effective than the conventional diet in improving insulin sensitivity, reducing medications, reducing visceral fat, reducing oxidative stress markers, and reducing cholesterol levels. So very successful. And the lead author of, this, of these studies that came out of the Czech Republic is now one of the key researchers at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. So they've joined forces. Uh, and uh, PCRM, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, has done a series of, of research articles, the first three probably being the most important in terms of looking at um, uh, specifically diabetes, cha the changes in, in diabetes. So uh, they, they did um, a pilot study in 99, and then in 2006, they followed 99 people for 22 weeks, and, and then 2009, they reported the results of following those same people for 74 weeks. And they found both the low-fat vegan diet and the American Diabetes Association diet improved glycemic and lipid control, but these improvements were actually significantly greater with the low-fat vegan diet. And they didn't see a lot of rever diabetes reversal, but they did see a lot of people reducing medications. And then we had a, res a Korean research team comparing a carbohydrate-rich vegan diet versus a conventional diabetic diet, and both diets reduced uh, A1Cs, but the vegan diet, again, more than double the conventional diet, it reduced um, uh, the A1C by about 0.5 points. And in highly adherent patients, it was 0.9 points, so even, even better results there. And then this study that Dr. Furman told you about uh, yesterday, very small study, 13 participants, but just exceptional results. So he dropped A1Cs from 8.2% to 5.8%, 2.4 points at seven months. 62% of the participants achieved normal glycemic measures. And uh, they lost uh, an average of 74 pounds. Their triglycerides dropped almost 70 uh, milligrams per deciliter on average. Their LDL dropped over 15 um, uh, milligrams per deciliter. And HDL actually increased by 6.3 milligrams per deciliter, which is very unusual with plant-based diets. We often see a reduction. And so these results were really quite stellar and showed reversal. We don't have a lot of studies that have solidly showed reversal. So this is really a very promising. We have many uh, reviews and meta-analyses, 2016, three, uh, two in 2017, three in 2018, uh, one so far, in two, uh, one in 2019. And they all said the same thing. We have strong, consistent evidence that whole food plant-based diets improve blood glucose, improve insulin sensitivity, improve blood lipids, and that they reduce or eliminate the need for medication and the risk of complications of this disease.